Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at the Gynagonic slash Gyn framework for writing HTTP web applications in Go. Now the Gyn framework is immensely popular and it's gained over 20,000 stars on GitHub and I'll leave a link to where you can see that in the description below. And as always, if you find this tutorial useful at all, then please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more programming content. I'm currently pushing for 5,000 subscribers, so every subscriber counts. Okay, so let's get into the code. So I've opened up Visual Studio Code here, which is my editor of choice. Now I've created a really simple main.go file, which simply prints out hello world. And we can test that this all works by calling go run source main.go. Nice and simple. Now we're also going to be using Go modules in this tutorial and I know this is a new feature that's just been released in version 1.11 of the language. Now in order to initialize this project we'll have to do go mod init like so and that creates a new go mod file. Okay so let's open up our main.go file and start programming. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is to import our gin-gonic framework. So at the top let's add a couple of parentheses and we're going to do github.com slash gin dash gonic slash gin like so and just below this we're going to want to start using the framework now just to get us up and running really quickly um, we're going to use gin dot default oops and we're going to do a really simple dot get request or dot get endpoint. Now this is just going to be for the root endpoint like so. Now we want to define this by passing in the path and then an anonymous function which will take in the gin dot context and it will return a JSON string with 200 status and gin dot h and we're going to do message and hello world like so save that and then just at the bottom we're going to want to listen and serve this on port 8080 by calling r.run next we want to do is very quickly fix a we typo here by adding a comma and we want to run this by calling go run source slash main dot go now this will go ahead and it will start up our gin HTTP framework and it will listen on port 8080. Now if we shoot over to a browser and we hit localhost port 8080, you can see that the JSON returned when I hit this endpoint is message and hello world as expected. And if we have a look at the terminal output for our incredibly simple program, you can see that it gives us the date and the time that this request is made. You can see the HTTP status code that was returned and we can see the amount of time that the request took to be served with. Now we can also see the path and we can see the verb used to hit our application. Now for what is effectively about 10 lines of code, that is an incredible amount of information given to us with very little additional work needed. Now that we've got a really simple example up and running, let's try and expand this further and actually create something that would look more like a production ready application. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this anonymous function and I'm going to put it as its own function up here. I'm also going to give it a name, so I'm going to say home page and I am going to call just in here home page like so. So this will stop everything being done within our main function and we can expand this out to include things from different packages should we wish to. Now as always, let's iteratively test these things. So every time we make a change, we'll test it and we'll ensure that the behavior is as expected and nothing has changed. And as you can see, everything is still working as expected. So we've got a really simple get based endpoint exposed within our application. But typically in production level APIs, you'll see things exposed on all the various other HTTP verbs such as post, put, delete, patch, and so on. So let's now see how we can expand our example and add these various different endpoints into our application. Now, the first one I'm gonna do is a post endpoint. 
So I'm going to keep the same path and do r.post. And I'm going to create a new function and I'm going to call this post page or post home page. And just up here above our main function, I'm going to do, I'm going to actually define this post home page function. So again, it's going to take in this C gen context. And I'm going to return JSON as well. So JSON 200 gen.h and I'm going to change the message up just a little bit. So post home page like so. Add the trailing comma and save that. And let's try restarting our application. So go run source main.go again. And everything has started as expected. Now, in order to test our new post based endpoint, I'm going to open up a program called Postman. And again, I'll be leaving a link to where you can get this in the description below. Now, Postman is essentially a REST client that is incredibly popular with web developers and programmers all across the world. So it's something that I feel that it would be very worthwhile getting to know. Now, as you can see, I've entered the localhost port 8080 URL into my input form, and I've specified that I'm going to hit this with a get verb. Now, when I hit this request, you can see that the message returned is our standard hello world one, which is exactly the same as we saw in the browser. Now, if I change this verb to post and I hit the same request, you can see that the message returned is our newly added post homepage response which was defined within our post homepage function like so. And as you can see within our terminal output, we now have three different requests. Um, so one was the original get request and the last one which we just sent there was our post request. Now, so far we've been successful in creating a really simple API that features a router and exposes both a get and a post endpoint within that API. Now you could do the same for all of the other HTTP verbs such as put, um, delete, patch, head and or options. And again you would just specify the function that you wished to route that particular API request towards. So that just about covers the basics. Now let's try and expand this further and try and do some more complex things such as query strings, path parameters and trying to retrieve the body of any post requests, which are very typical tasks that you would have to do within most APIs. So let's first of all try and look at how we would handle query strings within a REST API. So to do that, I'm going to create a new endpoint that's going to be accessible over the get HTTP verb, and I'm going to call this query. Now I'm going to create a new function called query strings, and effectively what this is going to do is it's going to take in any slash query requests and it's going to parse the query strings which looks something like this. So name equals Elliot and age equals 24. Now I'll then be able to take these from our path or query and I'll be able to then use these to manipulate any responses sent back from that particular endpoint. So just above our main function we're going to define this query strings function now. Again this is going to take in the pointer to the gen.context and just in here, we're going to do the following. So name equals c.query and just name. So this will take in any sort of name equal Elliot. Uh, and then we're going to do age equals c.query and age like so. And finally, I'm going to return a response object. So just within here, I'm going to do the following. So Instead of returning a message, I'm going to want to return uh, the name and I'm going to want to return age. Perfect. So let's try run that. So go run source main.go as we had before. And let's open up Postman once again and add query and then our query string parameters. So name equals Elliot and age equals 24 like so. I'm now going to send this and as you can see the JSON returned is exactly what we expected. So it's been able to parse both the name and the age from my query string here. Now if this was a more fully fledged API it would probably go off to insert them into the database or do some form of data manipulation with whatever query strings were passed. But for now this just shows you how to really simply 
parse those query string values. So let's now have a look at how you would do path parameters as opposed to query string parameters. Now let's come back into our program and we're going to define a new endpoint. And again, it's going to be the similar format to our query string parameters. But with this, we're going to expect the following. So slash path. And instead of having the query string, we're going to say, okay, I want the name here and the age here. Now to do that, we're going to want to do the following. So change this to path. And then we're going to specify colon name and colon age like so. And because we can't use this same function, we're going to call this to path parameters. Copy this and let's create that function now. So func path parameters, again, taking in the pointer to the gen.context. And then we want to do the following. So name. And this is going to be equal to c.param name and age is going to be again equal to c.param age. So this is incredibly similar to our query strings, except that instead of using c.query, it's using c.param. And again, we're going to steal this JSON object and we're going to copy and paste it in here because I'm feeling quite lazy today. So again, we've just added a new endpoint to our REST API, but let's now iteratively test these things. So go run source main.go and we're going to open up our Postman once again. Now we're going to add this new path parameter and we're going to say test name and we're going to add the value 100 here just to sort of mix things up a wee bit. Now I'm going to send this get request and as you can see, it's been able to successfully parse these path parameters from my URL and it's been able to print them back in JSON format to me as expected. So everything is now working with both our query strings and our path parameters. So the final thing I want to cover with you is how you can read in the post request body within a function. Now we're going to modify our existing post endpoint so that it can read in any test value or any value we pass in through the body of our request in Postman. Now let's go up to our post homepage function. And the first thing we're going to do is specify body equals C dot request dot body. And we're then going to do the value or error is equal to IO util dot read all and body. And if error does not equal nil, then we are just going to print out the error for now, but you should typically return a response of type error. And we're then going to pass in to our message. Instead of hello world, we're going to do string and value like so. Save that and let's try run this again. So go run source main.go. And let's try hitting this post request with our test data. So as you can see, test or hello world both successfully respond respond with the json that we would have expected which is the message and the value of our post body so that's all i'm going to cover in this tutorial for now but we are going to look at things like testing and productionizing this api in a future tutorial now if you enjoyed this or found it useful please leave a like and let me know in the comment section down below and if you have any further questions, I'd be happy to hear them down in that comment section as well. And as always, subscribe to my channel for more programming content. Cheers.